I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the village of Child Oakford in Dorset. It's about six miles northwest of Blandford Forum and 20 miles northwest of Poole. And we're going to be walking a roughly five mile circular route, taking in the village, then going up, and I mean up, the iconic Hambledon Hill with its hill fort on top, and then back down over the River Stour and along the North Dorset Trailway to end up at the old Shillingston Railway Station. Now I'm filming in the middle of May. Well, the sun is out at the moment. It keeps coming in and out. A lot of cloud about, but the forecast is really sunny later on. So it should be perfect conditions for walking. Do come along with us. Well, I've parked my car on the outskirts of the village of Shillingston, which is to the south of Child Oakford. And I've actually parked the car in a free car park, uh, a, a trailway car park. And I'll tell you a bit more about the, the trailway towards the end of the video, because we'll be coming back along that on our homeward journey. So to start the walk, we're going to initially head towards Child Oakford, but instead of going along the road, we're going to go along this rather pleasant path across a meadow, <laughs> if we can get away from these flies. Well, there's a nice little stretch of enclosed path along here. A good place for some whippet zoomies. Well, this is our first crossing today of the River Stour. It's 61 miles long and its source is at Stour Head in Wiltshire and it flows out to sea at Christchurch. We're actually on the Stour Valley Way, which is a 64 mile long distance path that basically follows the river. Well, we've just been escorted through the field by this lot. They were okay. They uh, kept a few yards back and of course Logan is on a on a lead. Right, right, we are now heading into Child Oakford. Now it gets its name from well the C I L D bit is Old English for noble born son and then the A C in the Ford bit is uh, was sort of old English for Oak Tree Ford. And one of its most famous residents was uh, Harry Corbett. And uh, older viewers might remember him from the days of Sooty and Sweep. And apparently he lived in the village until he died in 1989. Well, we're just coming into the village and I think this is Child Oakford House. I'm not 100% sure. And if it is, it's uh, 18th century with 19th century additions, although parts date to the 17th century. I love the wisteria outside and Look at the lion's head up on the wall there, isn't that brilliant? Well, what a pretty village full of gorgeous cottages and houses. In front of me here is the Baker's Arms pub. Now, there's been a pub on the site since at least 1754 when it was a beer house. And in 1790, it was known as the Bear Inn. And in 1813, recorded as White Bear. But in 1815, it was called the Lamb Inn. And finally, it changed its name to the Baker's Arms in 1821. Now the current sign here, which is quite rusty, has been there since the 1930s and 1940s. And it's the coat of arms of uh, Baker of Ranston with its motto, Finis Coronet Opus, which means the end crowns the work. But some sources state uh, it's named after Lady Baker, a local landowner. Certainly a Peter William Baker bought the Ranson estate nearby in 1781. 
Now there is another pub up the road to the northwest called the Saxon Inn. It was originally a beer house and called the New Inn in 1861 and then changed its name to the Saxon Inn between 1955 and 1965. Now we're not going to be able to have a look at it just at the moment. Might be able to see it right at the end. Uh, I was reading that there are some new owners there and they've got a whippet called Reggie. <laughs> well folks, purely for research purposes, let's pop into the Saxon Inn. Let's see if Reggie is there. Ah! Hi. No, I heard. I heard hey, that. The, hey. I saw on the internet that there was oh, a whippet hey, here called Reggie. Hey, 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 Oh, bless. Boy. How exciting. How old's Reggie? He'll be seven in September. Oh, He's goodness. seven, Logan. They're the same oh, age, yeah. Oh, gosh. There we go, We've just been for a lovely walk up to Hamilton Hill. Oh, wonderful. And this is the Church of St Nicholas. Now, there was possibly a church uh, on the site in Saxon times, and it's known that there was a church certainly built here in about 1250, 1270. But the old medieval church was knocked down in the 19th century and a virtually new one built in 1878. The tower, which dates from the late 15th century, early 16th century, was retained. And it consists of a nave, chancel, west tower, north and south aisles, south chapel and north chapel, and a vestry. Well, I would normally film inside, but uh, there's some ladies in there that are busy preparing flowers and what have you for tomorrow's service. I don't want to disturb them, so I'll just show you some photographs instead. Now a little update on the route in case you're doing this walk after watching the video. We're just coming out of the village, sort of heading in a what a northeasterly direction, and you need just to look out for a footpath. And the only sign is this little way marker on the telegraph pole there, and this is where we head right. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, when the sun does come out, it really is quite glorious. Well, I'm making my way along a little uh, footpath along the side of a field. Uh, in front of me, I can just about see in the distance the old manor house, which parts date to the 17th century, but I, I can only see glimpses of it. Now, before we head up the hill, I'm going to make a little detour to the sort of northwest. Um, I'm intrigued by something that I found on the, the internet. Now, a little bit embarrassing, as regular viewers will know, often when I try and find things, I don't always find them, and uh, that's the case here. I've been trying to find something, uh, well, it's a sort of circle, or should I say two stone circles of about 108 stones, and it's a sort of medicine wheel that was made in 2004. 
Um, I don't know too much about it, uh, other than a little bit of information that I found on the internet. Um, I think it's dedicated to spiritualists across the world. And there's an inner circle, which is the feminine one, and an outer circle, which is the masculine one. And the whole circle is to do with balancing and harmonising uh, energy, invoking universal love and peace around the world. <laughs> which is all very well, except I can't find it. I think it's somewhere um, in those oilseed rape fields, um, but I'm not going to go looking because, well, I'm, I'm okay with oilseed rape, but I'm not sure about Logan. Sometimes it can affect dogs' eyes, so I don't really want to risk that. So, well, I've told you about it, and I'll see if I can find some pictures and put it up on screen. <laughs> Let's carry on with our walk. We've now got the uphill section. Right, are we ready for this? <laughs> Well, as I'm walking up here, let me tell you a little bit about the hill itself. The earliest uh, occupation up here was in Neolithic times when a pair of causeway enclosures were dug at the top of the hill. There are two long barrows, one is 68 metres long, I believe, and the oldest remains here include a skeleton that was dated as far back as 2850 BC. Now the site today is more easily recognised now as an Iron Age hill fort. It's about 31 acres in size. The Duratrigues tribe were based here, but it was abandoned at around uh, 300 BC, possibly in favour of nearby Hod Hill Fort, which is much bigger at 54 acres. Indeed, uh, Logan and I have done a video there. And the defences literally follow the contours of the hill. There's a multi-ditch system and there's debate uh, whether or not it's defensive or they were status symbols. But they would have had wooden ramparts on top of the banks and possibly streets and roundhouses inside. It was one of a chain of hill forts in Dorset. I mean you've got Hod Hill, Maiden Castles, another one for example. And later there was a Romano-British field system covering the hill and an Anglo-Saxon cemetery was set on the parish boundary on the spur towards the southeast. It's now a nature reserve and National Trust bought the hill fort in 2014. And there's quite a lot of, well, semi-recent history as well. In August 1645, during the English Civil War, the hill was the scene of a pitched battle between the Dorset clubmen and Oliver Cromwell's troops. Uh, the clubmen supported, well, neither the Royalists or the Parliamentarians. They were just fed up uh, with the destruction that the war was causing on their livelihoods. And all they had was clubs and minimal arms. They were no match for the professional roundhead troops and they were easily defeated, even though they numbered between three or four thousand. And then uh, later, General James Wolfe used the hill's steeper sides in 1756 to train his troops in attacking uphill. His army later surprised the French at the Battle of Quebec in Canada in 1759. When scaling the plains of Abraham under darkness, or I think they're also known as the Heights of Abraham, it proved to be a deciding moment in the conflict between France and Britain over the fate of New France, which was an area in North America colonised by the French. It basically influenced the later creation of Canada. Well, I'm very much at the, the foot of the ascent now. And just by me here, there's a handy little map uh, it shows you where we've been so well we you know, started off at the church didn't we and we've followed this footpath here and then we went along here and yeah we got to there I th uh, I th uh, looking at my map actually the those stone circles I think are there and I was kind of there and this was all oil seed rape so I couldn't get through anyway we're now here so we're going to basically do a little exploration at the top of the hill.
<laughs> a little pit stop to admire the view on the way up and to catch our breath. A little breeze up here, hopefully it's not affecting the audio too much. Ah, I can see those stone circles now, just between those two trees. So uh, I can see where I took the wrong path. Um, we, went, we sort of came across through that oilseed rape. And if we just carried on a little bit to the left, we would have seen them, but there we go. <laughs> we can see them from here. made it to the top or should I say one of the summits it looks like there's a little bit further to go and well the views from up here they are quite stunning now it is quite windy here so I'm just going to slowly pan the camera round and hopefully you'll be able to get an idea of the views from up here it is still quite hazy but there's uh, the village down below just make out the church tower and then this is just panning around and from here you really do get a feel of the sheer enormity of the hill and the beautiful shapes that uh, those cuttings have, have made in the side there and there are some cows on the top there so I'm gonna have to put Logan back on the lead for a little well you just have to <laughs> you keep stopping every five minutes just to take in these views. It's almost as if someone's sort of scooped out from a bowl down below and some quite lovely different colours on the trees with the leaves. And uh, from up here oh, you get a, a really good view of the, the manor house from up here. And there's right at the bottom there was that uh, field that we initially came along heading out of the village but the views are this really is your typical Dorset rolling landscape and of course this time of year everything's so fresh and green oh, one of my favourite spring flowers and so typical of uh, Chalkland uh, certainly in their element up here so this is looking very much to the to the south and the end of the the hill fort you can see in the distance there where it kind of has a sort of rounded edge to it that's our next destination well a really well preserved part of the, the ramparts and the ditch on the sort of northern side of the fort and then just this bit here this clearly must have been one of the entrances you can see how easy it would have been to defend another little map so yeah we've made our way basically across the hill and, and we're just going to make our way I think there's a trig point round about here and then we're going to start heading back towards the village and then we're going to sort of head in this direction towards uh, uh, the trailway well just before we start heading down off Hambledon Hill we've come across a trig point and of course as regular viewers will know trick points have to be bagged in the customary manner. Well 
or just a little update on the route. Just before uh, we come back into uh, um, Child Oakford, we're uh, now heading towards Shillingston. So you can see Hamilton Hill in the background. Just come across this meadow. There's a chap here, metal detecting. Just been having a quick chat with him. He hasn't found anything yet. Just passing by uh, what looks like a cross-country course or certainly a, a schooling ground for one. <laughs> this brings back memories when I had my old horse Bo we used to do cross-countries but <laughs> these look a bit big. Uh, we, didn't, we tended just to keep to two foot nine maximum. <laughs> we weren't very brave. Now, I don't know if you can see on the GoPro I might have to see if I can take a picture using the zoom but Above the ridge on the skyline, there's about one, two, three, four, five, it's about eight. What are they, paragliders? They must uh, be the perfect position to get the right currents up there. Now that does look fun. drink of water just cool down a bit just what the doctor ordered <laughs> lovely chalk stream coming off the hill well, another look back at Hamilton Hill incredible to think that we were on top of that not that long ago and, uh, just crossing this uh, I mentioned already the fields looking very lush and green and we're just about to cross over the River Star again looking quite well yeah I'd say in full flow <laughs> quite muddy I mean we've had a fair bit of rain and uh, it is a river that does flood and I guess this is probably a floodplain as well not 100% sure Right, well our next challenge after crossing the bridge is, well the footpath heads in that direction so we've got to get across some mud and then bypass those cows. Well I know some people get worried walking through fields of cows and best practice is to avoid it if you can in this situation where the footpath goes straight through the field but we're actually going to have to slightly divert away from the footpath but we do have you can see a couple that are inquisitive so the thing is just to ignore them and to go slowly and Logan is on a lead very tight lead by me providing they're just being inquisitive um, the main herd is over to my left and a couple that have spotted us and are coming across but um, we're not that far away from the fence now and uh, I think we're pretty much in the clear they look yeah they do look young but it's not a field full of um, cows with their very young, which is probably the most uh, dangerous uh, scenario. But there we go. The ones that were following us have given up and gone back to their mates. And we're on the other side of the field. Right, having <laughs> crossed that uh, field of cows, we're now very much on the homeward leg now. Um, Pardon me. 
We're now on the old trailway, which uh, is a well, remnants of an old railway line. And it's a section of the old Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway, which linked Bristol and Bournemouth, built in the 1860s and closed in the 1960s. It extends for about 14 miles between Sturminster Newton and Spetsbury, and it's managed by the North Dorset Countryside Service. It's a very popular cycle route as well as a walking route these days. That's a nice touch. There's a little, looks like a hide that you can look through onto the river below looking for wildlife. I wonder if they get uh, otters this far down on the stair. Maybe. And this is Shillingston Railway Station. It was opened in 1863 and closed in 1966. Restoration started in 1997 and the North Dorset Railway Trust was formed to develop a living museum and they're hoping to extend the track and offer passenger rides on a heritage railway in the future. But it was an important station as it was one of the passing places on the single line between Temple Coombe and Blandford. And so you can come here, there's free entry, it's uh, very much dog friendly, it's a little cafe. I think it's open Wednesdays, Saturdays and Sundays and bank holiday Mondays between 10 and 4. And so it's located very much to the north of the village. Looks as though there's some volunteers today. And just looking back over up to the hill, what a superb view you get from the station. Gosh, this is <laughs> like going back in time. And just imagine what it would have been like all those years ago when this was a, a working station. It's lovely how it's all being restored. And here's the old station building. A lot of it's been repainted. Isn't that lovely? And there's a, the little cafe in there. And then you can have your cups of tea inside the carriages I believe. Lovely place to come and have a, a cup of tea on a spring day. Well folks we've come to the end of our walk we hope you enjoyed it if you did please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment and do check out our Facebook page Dave's Countryside Walks. So from Shillingston Station <laughs> until we meet again thanks for watching and Shirio. Right, now, the beef pasty, you can have a little bit. What about that bit? Yes, I thought he might. <laughs>